Probably the most important step in doing hydrology is creating an accurate drainage area. And to create an accurate drainage area, you're going to need accurate contour lines. Now there's basically three ways we can get contours. We can do a survey ourselves, we can rely on flown LIDAR scans, or we can rely on uh, USGS topo maps uh, from the 60s and 70s. And I'm going to just talk a little bit about both and how we can combine them. First up, you might have survey that you've done with a total station, or you could have a grid survey done by uh, using your level. And if you input that into, say, EFT or Civil 3D, uh, you can develop triangles, and from the triangles you can develop contours. This is probably the best bet, but oftentimes we don't survey the entire watershed of a practice that we're designing. We'll just design the site area needed to construct it, and then kind of fill in the watershed contours with something else. For example, a LIDAR. So LIDAR is available for, I'd say, one-half to two-thirds of New York State. You can get it from the GIS Clearinghouse, download it, process it, and arc map, display contours, uh, what have you, and then uh, delineate the rest of your watershed using these contours. Then finally, in areas that we don't have LIDAR coverage, you can use the USG contour maps, USGS contour maps, these are also available as digital elevation models from the clearinghouse, so you can uh, play with them in, in GIS as well. They're not quite as accurate as the LiDAR, uh, but they're, they're generally suitable for kind of large, large size, uh, low detail watershed studies. Uh, with any drainage area mapping, you're going to need to, to ground truth it, uh, it after you've mapped it out. So here's kind of uh, the basic principles of drainage area delineation using contour maps. The first thing to do is come up with a design point. Okay, a design point for most structures will just be the structure itself, say for a manure storage or for a catch basin or for a pond. The design point is just the structure itself. For a linear structure such as a diversion, your down point, design point will be the most downstream point. Okay, so you want to start from your design point and then go up into the watershed going perpendicular to the contours. And when you're doing your delineation, you'll be looking for hills surrounding uh, the watershed, uh, and you'll be connecting lines between, between the hills. So in, in this watershed, these two hills represent uh, border points on the watershed, and the other border point is this saddle between the hills. Um, you can look at the contour shapes to help you do help you do your delineations. Uh, on water courses, they always point uphill. See these these contours kind of bend and make up arrow. They point uphill. On a nose of a hill, see there's no water course in this area. The contours point downhill. So in this watershed, you'd be coming up uh, through the perpendicular to the contours, up to the top, across, and then back down. So, uh, uh, ground truthing is really important, especially if you have roads or man-made features, because they don't always get picked up in the LiDAR. Uh, you might see it as kind of a jagged contour or a little blip, but it's not very apparent. So it's really important to be able to walk your watershed uh, to get an accurate idea of the map. Now, GIS has some tools for hydrology, and they are useful to some extent, However, they're mostly geared towards doing hydrology for existing streams. If you're creating a new structure, say a new diversion, uh, you won't be able to delineate the drainage area for that using, say, a DEM or a LIDAR geotiff. Uh, you'll need something with existing streams in it. But if you are working on a stream, uh, computer models can be great. So this is stream stats, as most of you should be aware of, uh, for New York. Um, its kind of limitation is that you can only delineate areas that are located on one of these blues, uh, one of these blue line streams. So you have to be zoomed in far enough for these to appear, and then you can only do watersheds small enough uh, on these. But uh, all in all, the computer um, methods are kind of neat because they'll give you ideas for how the water might flow that you might not otherwise think of. Here's kind of a same similar delineation and arc map uh, for these two two points, they're on existing watercourses, 
And uh, these are the delineations that ArcMap come up, came up with. Like the shape of this and the shape of this, it'd be pretty hard to come up with that on your own just using hand methods. So, uh, you know, while there might be hydrology tools available uh, in ArcMap and QGIS, I'm going to be teaching hand methods uh, in this course that's hand delineation. We'll be using a GIS uh, to do those delineations. But uh, in order to generate the boundaries, we're going to be using uh, just our own intuition. So let's jump over to ArcMap, and I'm going to show you a couple demos of delineating watersheds uh, kind of on the fly. This is a good time to talk about GIS in this course. To get the most out of this course, you should have some way to manipulate LiDAR data, DEMs, and TIFFs. And to do that, you'll need uh, ArcMap's Spatial Analyst add-in, which requires an ArcMap Advanced License. I know many of the soil and water districts might not have uh, an advanced license or spatial analyst add-in, and if that's the case for you, uh, you should look into downloading QGIS or QGIS, uh, and and using that for the spatial analyst features it has. It's a free program, and it has most of the spatial analyst tools uh, that we'll need uh, built in uh, for free. If you do have ArcMap with the spatial analyst extension. Uh, you'll be all set, and later on in the course, I'm going to be showing workflows for, for doing hydrology stuff uh, using both packages, both with QGIS and ArcMap. So for this course, I'm going to assume that most people have kind of a basic understanding of Ar ArcMap uh, or GIS and, and how to use it, uh, but I'm going to go pretty slow uh, to make sure that everybody's on the same page.